Hi there, and welcome to the last episode of the Butler Collegian Newscast. I'm Kristen Camilleri. And I'm Catalina Gallegos. The school year is quickly coming to an end. However, construction around campus is not. Construction will continue all summer as well, into the, as well as into the 2019-2020 school year as Butler continues to carry out its 2020 vision. Students and faculty arriving back on campus in the fall can expect the new Lacey School of Business building to be complete, furnished, and ready for use. The flood wall cutting through Holcomb Gardens, sunroom study space in Jordan Hall, and infrastructure work in Resco are also set to be completed this summer. The Butler Student Government Association announced that Jesse McCartney will be here as the headliner of this year's Exam Jam. McCartney has won numerous awards over the course of his music career and is most known for his hit songs Beautiful Soul and Leavin'. Exam Jam is this Sunday at 4 p.m. on the steps outside of Atherton Union. This concert is free for students. However, if you want to meet Jesse McCartney, the meet and greet passes are being sold exclusively for Butler students for only $40. The link to purchase meet and greet passes can be found on the SGA Twitter account and we will have a link on our website as well. And now Jake Fidel is here with our first look at sports. Hi hey. Jake. Hey Catalina. A lot of action that we've seen this past week so it's been fun to watch some of the different things that have been going on. The tennis season for the Bulldogs have co has come to an unfortunate end. Both the men and the women's teams headed to Casey, South Carolina to take part in the Big East Tournament. The men went in as a number two seed, having finished the regular season 21-6. The ladies were given a nine seed after posting an 11-13 record. The women played a rematch of the opening round of the 2018 term tournament by taking on Georgetown. They had hopes of being able to move on and play top-seeded Xavier, but it was not meant to be. Butler was shut out by the Hoyas 4-0. The men had a different story. They had a quarterfinal matchup against Villanova, which they won 4-2. They started out the match by winning the doubles point, something they hadn't done when they met in the regular season. They followed it up by having success in singles play and were able to move on to play Marquette. The semifinal matchup against the number three Golden Eagles was the closest match of the entire season. The teams would exchange a lead four times, with each program responding when they lost a matchup. The match came down to the final set in the final game to decide who would move on. Freshman standout Thomas Brendan sent, sent his matchup to a third tie-breaking set, but it came up just so, short 7-5. The 21-7 record is the best in program history in Coach po Daniel Pollock's first season with Butler. The senior class leaves the program is one of the most decorated, including their 2017 Big East Championship. Thanks, Jake. We're going to toss it over to Nikki Clark, who is live in the Weather Center and has been tracking a pretty mild day today. Nikki, how's it going? Thanks, Catalina. Yes, a pretty mild day indeed, with temperatures barely reaching 70. Pretty cloudy skies throughout the day today, and I'm tracking rain ahead. I'll have a full forecast in just a little bit. We'll be right back, but first, let's head over to some dogs with style. For junior Nick Trapello, fashion is a way to express what he's feeling. However, it took a little while to find outfits that best suited him personally. My style has definitely changed over time. I would say my style right now a lot more suits my personality more than it ever has in the past. There's been times like in middle school or early high school where I liked a lot of vineyard vines and more preppy, um, preppy attire. So I wore them and I liked them but they didn't really express like who I was or my personality. So I think I've definitely evolved and been able to become comfortable just picking out what I want and not falling into what everyone else wants or the biggest brands today. A lot of the clothes that I have, a lot of the brands I have are from stores or from areas that people have never even heard of. Now, Trefello has his own unique sense of style, which he claims stems from his European heritage and is full of solid basic colors. I think I've started developing this style probably about the last year and a half. A lot of the clothes that I have are from today and 18 months past. So I do go through a lot of clothes and are constantly changing my wardrobe. Um, but I think that just with where I want to go in life, the professional attitude I want to have and the presence I want to create, I've started evolving this fashion within the last 18 months. Trefello differentiates himself from other students at Butler through his fashion choices. I think Compared to other students at Butler, I take a lot more risks with mm -hmm. my style. 
Um, again, I like to wear a lot of just like solid colors, but I like to match them or pair them with other colors that most people traditionally wouldn't and make it work with the outfit. I really like shoes as a staple item and to pull the whole outfit together, but I think just my style differs just because it's loud in a very quiet way. My style's not in your face, but it's noticeable. Sherfellow talks about his favorite piece of clothing he has on now. My favorite piece that I'm wearing today would probably be this jacket. I really like it. Um, it is from a store in Italy, and I just think it's something that will be timeless and that you can wear with a variety of different items in multiple seasons. That's why I like it, because it's very like versatile. Individualism inspires Trefello when choosing what clothes to buy. Believe it or not, I just buy things that I like. There hasn't really been a huge influence in my life. There's not a single person that I go to all the time and I'm like, I want to be able to mimic or copy that. I've just always bought things that I like and hope that they worked out. And so far it's been pretty good. Trefello has a couple go-to stores he shops at when looking for a new outfit. I like Lujo, which is an Italian brand. I like Zara which is more widely known. It's a Spanish brand. Um, I sometimes will get pants from J. Crew, but only if they're on sale. These are from J. Crew, believe it or not. Um, again, I like just all these like little niche stores um, from places where I'm from at home, like Tiger Tree or Artisan Deluxe. Trefello gives Butler students advice on how they should branch out with their fashion choices. I would tell them to express themselves in whichever way they feel fits them. It doesn't have to be fashion, it could be writing, it could be anything, but I think just individualism and clothing is very individual. That's why I don't like to get a lot of inspiration from others. I like to just buy what I buy and I've found that it makes me really happy and makes me feel confident. I feel better throughout the day when I like the way that I look. The Butler Dance Department is preparing to perform their last show of the school year, Sleeping Beauty. Opening night is this Friday at 8 p.m. in Clues Memorial Hall. There will also be another performance Saturday at 8 p.m. and Sunday at 2 p.m. Tickets are $20 for adults and $15 for children ages 12 and under. Tickets can be purchased online or at the Clues box office. Clues is also celebrating its one millionth visitor. Students from Walnut Elementary School in Montgomery, Indiana traveled to Clues Hall last week to see the performance of Junie B. Jones. Little did they know that they would become the one millionth visitor of Clues Hall. Karen Mott is a librarian at the elementary school and said, quote, The students have seen plays on a smaller scale, but to go to Clues Hall in Indianapolis to see Junie B. Jones and be the one millionth customer was just the icing on the cake for a great day for them. End quote. What a great story. And now Jake Fidel is back with more sports. Thanks again, Catalina. Well, it was a rough week for, base, for Butler baseball as they lost their single game matchup against Purdue in prime time. They also lost two games against Xavier over the weekend. The Bulldogs put up a good fight against the Boilermakers. It was kept relatively close throughout much of the game. Designated hitter Robbie McCarger hit an RBI single in the fifth inning to start a Bulldog rally. Butler would score two runs in the fifth to take a 3-2 lead, but Purdue knotted things up in the home half. In the eighth inning, the lead was lost when Purdue scored two runs on an RBI double and an error by the Bulldogs. They fell to Purdue 5-3. Against Xavier, the bats were certainly alive. The teams combined for a total of 32 runs in just two games. The first of the series ended with Butler coming up just short in a 6-5 loss. Despite the efforts of Kyle Smith, who went 3-5 for five at the plate, Butler could not hang on to the 5-0 lead in the sixth inning, and the Musketeers clawed their way back to take the win. In Game 2, a total of 21 runs were scored before the sixth inning. The Bulldogs brought eight runs across before the sixth inning. <coughs> Excuse me but Xavier had success offensively as well. The Musketeers won the game by a score of 13 to eight. Butler takes on Seton Hall this upcoming weekend. Thanks Jake. As I mentioned at the beginning of the show, this is our last newscast of the year and our last newspaper will also be hitting stands this week. Our editor in chief Dana Lee has done a wonderful job this year and I sat down with her successor who also happens to be her sister. Take Hi there, I'm joined with junior Stratcom and poli sci double major Jessica Lee. She is also the editor in chief elect for the Butler Collegiate next year. Jessica, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. 
So just starting off, can you just kind of give us a little background of how did you get involved with the Butler Collegian? Sure. So I joined the Collegian my first year as a news reporter. Just really wanted to get involved with the newspaper here on campus. Awesome. I guess, why did you want to run for editor-in-chief of the newspaper? Um, kind of been here for since my first year and just really saw how our newspaper has grown since then and I just really wanted to be a bigger part of that and influence it a lot more as editor-in-chief. Um, what would you say are your plans for next year for taking over the Collegian? Um, content wise I think readers will see a lot more um, of what may affect them outside of what we call the Butler bubble and um, how such as like Butler Tarkington neighborhood area affects us, how we affect high schools in this area um, because we do affect a lot more um, than just what's in our little bubble. So I think it's fair that we have a fair coverage of things that are outside the, what we consider a little community. What would you say is your biggest challenge heading into this role next year? Biggest challenge I think is that we are, um, there are a lot of seniors graduating, I think, which we'll miss them a whole lot. You're one of them. And, um, and that's always just a challenge with the transition period and just everybody getting to learn their new position and kind of grow in their own role. Um, and I think we're going to really feel that next year. What are you looking forward to the most? Um, just getting to know the staff as a whole. I'm really excited and to see how we can grow. Um, and just kind of expanding from what I've known as a news editor and just like a little news section and getting to know the staff completely um, and just seeing the changes that we can make on campus. And is there any extra added pressure taking over this role um, because your sister is currently the editor-in-chief? Do you feel like you have big shoes to fill? <laughs> um, Dana for sure has made a lot of changes as editor-in-chief and she's really somebody to look up to. Um, and that in itself is a big deal just because she's done such a great job as EIC, but because she's my sister, um, if anything, I think that lessens the pressure just because we know each other so well and I know that this is something um, that connects us even more because I know I can rely on her because she's been in my same shoes, in the same shoes. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jessica, and we wish you all the best next year. Thank you. And we certainly do wish her the best of luck. Every year, the Women of Distinction Award is given to a Butler faculty member, staff member, and senior for their leadership and dedication to the Butler community. Karen Thickston, Director of Butler Community of the Arts, and Natalie Carter, who is a lecturer in the English department, will be presented with the award. The senior who will be presented with the award is kept a secret and will be announced the day of the reception, which is this Thursday in Atherton Union in room 111 at 1 p.m. All are welcome to attend. Well, you may have noticed some unusual visitors outside of Irwin Library. A mother and father goose have made their nest on the second floor ledge of the Irwin Library. The mother goose typically sits on her nest while the father hangs out in front of the entrance of Irwin. Library staff says it's hard to prevent the geese from nesting because they are federally protected. The library has posted on its Instagram and Twitter accounts warning students about the geese. They can be very irritable during this time of year and it is best to avoid them as much as possible. And it certainly has been a pretty cloudy day. Nikki Clark is live in the Weather Center for us. Thanks, Kristen. So today we obviously have a high of 63. Going into tomorrow, it's gonna to be a little bit warmer with the high of 67, but a chance of rain. On Friday, we're gonna get a high of 68, sunny with some clouds. Uh, going into the weekend, we're gonna be low 60s, but starting off next week, we're going to get into the 70s, but we're going to have to deal with some rain and storms also. So pretty drab weather coming up, but we're going to have to deal with it. Uh, let's go back over to Kristen and Catalina. Awesome. Thanks, Nikki. We certainly will be looking forward to that. Stay tuned for more news, and Jake Vidal is wrapping up sports when we come back. Happing had to wear a uniform to school most of her life. When senior Naomi Norris came to college, she was able to wear what she wanted and express herself through clothing. I would say it's very different. It does not conform. I think like a lot of my life I was told to conform. So then when I had the opportunity to kind of step out, that's what I did. I would say it's classy in a sense, but still like different and forward. 
Norris claims her dad helped inspire her style. He always loved the very like statement pieces, pieces you typically like look past or kind of like, ooh, at. Norris's style has changed and evolved as she has grown as a person. It's developing and learning, and I think that comes with like personal development too. I know that happened like with my style, where I kind of became comfortable with myself and confident with who I was. So I would start pulling on like different pieces. Like yes, like this represents like part of who I am. Her favorite accessory to add to any outfit is from her dad, who is a very important person in her life. I have this bracelet my dad gave me when I was five, and it's this like very petite gold chain, and on it has my name engraved. I've like always kept that. Um, I love to wear it. It's kind of like a fun piece to wear. Norris gives some advice for Butler students who want to wear unique non-conforming pieces of clothing around campus. If you like it, like wear it and own it. Like it's your it's your piece of clothing. You rock it. And if you like exert that confidence. And now Jake Bedell is back with one final recap of sports. Jake. Thanks once again, Catalina. It was another one and two weekend for the softball program as they took on Creighton in Omaha, Nebraska this past weekend. After being shut out in the first game of the series three to zero, the Bulldogs complete competed well in the second game. After be falling behind 2-0 to in the third, the Bulldogs responded by bringing across two runs of their own thanks to a two-RBI double by Sammy Anderson. Creighton responded with a run in the home half of the fourth, jumping out to a 3-2 lead. While Butler tied the game in the final inning, the Blue Jays hit an RBI single to get a walk-off win 4-3. The final game ended in Bulldog victory by a score of 8-0. <clears throat> Excuse me. The bats came to life as Butler brought across three runs in the opening frame followed by five more in the second. That was all they would need as Alyssa Graves shut down the Creighton offense with a dominant pitching performance. She moves to 6-13 and 13 on the season. Thanks, Jake. Well, with the weather getting warmer, Lime scooters will be more fun to get around Indianapolis. Our very own Nikki Clark tested out these scooters and has everything you need to know before you hop on. Hi, I'm Nikki Clark here in Broad Ripple. You've probably seen these scooters around campus as they're slowly making their way through the Indianapolis area, but I'm here checking them out. So the first thing you have to do in order to use these scooters is to download the Lime Scooter app from the App Store. Once you open up the app, all you have to do is click Scan to Ride and scan the barcode in the middle of the handlebars. After that, the scooter unlocks and you're good to go. Once you've scanned the code, you just kick up the kickstand and you're on your way. Well, dogs, it truly has been an honor to anchor this newscast. As a journalist, it is my job to keep you informed of everything happening around campus, and this is a role I don't take lightly. I plan to continue my journalism career after graduation and to continue to inform the communities I will be fortunate enough to work in. Thank you again for tuning in week after week, and I'm excited for the future of this newscast and the Butler Collegian. Thank you to our producer, Matthew Fleckenstein, floor director, Zach Horrell, as well as Jack Jankowski and Alexis Wallman for all their help. This newscast truly wouldn't be possible without them. And it certainly has been an honor and a pleasure to work alongside all of you guys. I'll miss you guys so much, and I truly do wish you guys the best. Next year, I'll be excited to tune into the newscast mm -hmm. via Facebook, probably, or the yeah. website. <laughs> we'll have to see. We'll have to see. There's going to be a lot of developments coming in this next year. I think I speak for myself and everybody on the Collegian staff when we say thank you, Kristen, uh, Zach Morrill, the multimedia editor for the Butler Collegian, and uh, Matthew Fleckenstein for the executive producer for this show. Uh, you guys have all put in a lot of work through this show throughout the course of this year, so we really appreciate all the hard work that you put in. Thank it you really so much, won't be Jake. The same in the studio without y'all. I think we're having an, we're getting an emotional Zach. Zach, you right over there. I know I'm feeling really emotional <laughs> right about now. <laughs> On a happier note, though, what is everybody's um, plans for the summer? I, I'll be I'll be going back home for my last summer home before like starting internships next summer and stuff. So back to Texas I go. And I'm making Catalina come to Bonnaroo with me. Oh, we're, we're going to, to Bonnaroo. Bonnaroo. Be fun. <laughs> That's going to be a lot of fun. I'm a big concert person myself, so I'm going to be going to a lot of concerts. I have a venue that's about five minutes away from my house. You so. want to come to Bonnaroo with us? I might have to see. I'm not going to play the sure. guitar. Maybe you can come. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I might just hop on stage, to be honest. Honestly, I would watch. <laughs> <laughs>
I hope we'll have some time for some fun stuff. Hopefully, I won't get a job too soon. Where I can <laughs> but hopefully, you'll get a great job when you get that. a job. We'll keep in touch. I want a job, but I don't want a job too soon. I still want to enjoy my summer. Makes sense. Well, keep in touch for, with whatever you do over the course of this summer. It'll be fun to see you know, all the fun things that you do after graduation. You'll be no, watching absolutely. us, but we'll want to be watching you too. Aw, <laughs> thanks, guys. <laughs> And for one final time, to stay up to date with all things news on Butler's campus, visit us at thebutlercollegian.com or on Twitter at the Butler Collegian. I'm Kristen Camilleri. And I'm Catalina Gallegos. I'm Jake Bedell. And I'm Nikki Clark. Have a great week, dogs. Good luck on finals and have an awesome summer.